Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Northgate Baptist Church. We are so excited to have our brothers and sisters from Entery Baptist Church with us this evening. Uh, my friend, the Reverend Tom Sloan, I appreciate him so much. It's been such a blessing in my life. We've traveled a little bit of the same road together, and um, a lot of the same road together, and uh, uh, through some, some hard times and some good times, and God has uh, blessed us both and grown us as a result of that, and I appreciate uh, him and, and uh, Entery brothers and sisters, I appreciate you. Uh, I know that you've uh, spent time uh, in prayer for me, and this is an opportunity for me to say thank you for your prayers. Um, I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much, very much. I want to read a passage of scripture, and then I want us to lead us in prayer, and then we'll do some singing. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. The author of Hebrews wrote, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the incredible love you have for us. A love that goes beyond any understanding we have in the flesh. A love that is perfect. A love that is enduring. A love that is eternal. Father, thank you for proving that love at Easter. Thank you for sending to us your only begotten Son to die on a cross as our Savior and as our Lord. For Father, we have gathered here tonight for the purpose of worshiping his holy name. And we pray, God, that if there be anything that would hinder our worship, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, by the power of of your Holy Spirit, that you take that away from us, whatever that hindrance might be, that you might receive praise, glory, and worship in your house, in your church. Father, we ask your blessings upon the choirs as they've come together. We ask your blessings upon the the congregation, we ask your anointing upon Pastor Sloan, Lord, that you would speak to us in music, singing, in the preaching of the word. God, give us hearts that are open and ears that are open and ready to receive your truth. Father, we thank you for our country, for our beloved nation. We pray for soldiers, even right now, that are in foreign lands, fighting, standing on guard, defending our freedoms. We pray, God, for their families, separated by the miles. We pray, God, you'd be near to them. We pray, Lord, that we'd be good stewards of this freedom that you've given us to worship you without fear of persecution. That we'd raise our voices tonight together. It's two of your churches coming together for the purposes of worship in a free nation where no police officer and no soldier will break up our meeting. Thank you, God, for that blessing, that opportunity. And we pray, Father, we'd be faithful stewards of this time. We pray this in all things, in the rich name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
you stand with me as we sing number 426, Victory in Jesus. So we praise our Lord together.
Let's give God some praises. In that great getting up morning, fairly well, fairly well. How many know there'll be no more dying in that great getting up morning? How many know that their troubles will be? Let us pray. When I look back, over my life and I think about from where you brought me from my soul cries out hallelujah for all the good that you've done for me Lord we come this afternoon and we see the bright sun shining We thank you for the rain that you've given us to water this beautiful earth. We realize that you are God and beside thee there is no other. We ask now that you look down on us this afternoon with a heart of pity and compassion. That we'll be able to do what thus says the Lord. Bless these two churches as we come together for fellowship that we will be able to have a word from the Lord, that we will be better men, women, boys, and girls, being able to go out and tell a dying world that you live and you live within our hearts. Lord, we ask now that you anoint my voice, keep me in good health, touch this waiting congregation, that whatever I may see will be meet for them for this coming week. And for all of these things. We'll give you all honor, glory, and praises. And all of the saints said, Amen. Amen. When I look to my right, I look out of that wonder today and I said, how beautiful it is to be able to see the setting of another sun. Somebody did not see that this afternoon. But he allowed us to have the sight the activity of our limbs to be able to come and celebrate one more time the breath that he has left in our body. Somebody ought to give God some praises. I did not get with my sound men, but they they on the job. Amen. He's with me. Amen. Thank you. I told Pastor Jameson is that I move from side to side, so I'm good for right now, but I'll pick it up in a little while. So thank you. To your pastor, uh, Dr. Jameson, uh, a good friend of mine, and that we have traveled some dangerous roads together, some tedious journeys together in relationship to our health. But through it all, we have, he has allowed us to be able to carry out the mandates that he has called us to do. To my good friend and partner and praying partner and uh, Brother Jack Deal, his lovely wife, we say to you, good to see you again. And to the Northgate Baptist Church family, it is good to be back in the house of the Lord. It 
it's been a while, but he, he redditioned it that way, that we would go through these changes and come back yearning for the fellowship between one another and to Ennery and visitors and friends, we say to you, thank you for coming. Just raise your hand, Ennery. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> now, the reason why I did that is to make sure that you see where the Ennery members are. Just in case you decide to uh, say the wrong thing, <laughs> uh, hunch the wrong person, I want you to know that they get happy. <laughs> and uh, so be on the lookout. And the apple of my eye, my queen and my helpmate, the mothers, my children, my wife, my confidant, Ms. Sloan, would you stand? Thank you. And what we would be without our musician. Musician, stand. Amen. <laughs> now, you know why I'm going through all this, right? I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> So it'll take a little while to kind of get everything settled down. And our officers, stand up officers. We got our officers here today. Deacons, amen. Trustees, amen. It is good to be here. For the ones that have your Bibles, would you turn with us to the printed text 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, 24th verse. We had our youth and young adult program this morning. We invited a youth speaker. And ironically, she preached basically from the same message on this morning. She was not able to be with us this afternoon, but I, that was confirmation this morning that we chose basically two of the same texts to be preached on the same Sunday. So we thank the Lord for that confirmation. 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and the 24th verse says this. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. 25, and every man that strives for the mastery is tempered in all things, knowing that do it obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. If I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as that beateth the wind. But I keep my body and bring it into subjection. Least that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. <laughs> my Lord, know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. A subject, the Christian race. The Christian race. Can you help me say that? The Christian race. But I have another subtopic that I want you to be able to tell someone this week. And as a witness for my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm running for my life. Look at your other neighbor and repeat it again. I'm running for my life. We are all in a race. The 
The race may not be in the sense of a track meet or a a sporting event, but we are all in a race. I can hear someone saying to themselves, I'm too young to be in the race. But you are in the race anyway. Age is not a factor. Another person may say, I'm too old to be in the race. But I tell you, you are in the race. And I can hear someone else say, they're not talking about me. Because I refuse to be drawn in to this rat race of life. Uh, So I'm going to just sit on the sidelines. I'm going to watch from the sidelines. I'm going to sit, take a seat in the stand. And I'm going to buy me some popcorn. Sit and watch, eat my popcorn, drink me a soft drink. Uh, just watch the race from the sideline. Well, well, well. I hate to burst your bubble. You are in the race, whether you want to be in it or not. You are in the race, and let me remind you, you're in a race for your life. You ought to give God some praises in here. Northgate inner revisitors and friends. We are all in a race. We do not have a choice. Each one of our races are set before us. We do not want it, but it's there. We did not ask for it, but we have it. Some may deny it, but it's there. Some may try to withdraw or cancel the race, but you can't cancel this race of life. We are all in this never-ending race of life. Solomon, one of God's wisest prophets, said it like this, I returned and I saw under the sun that the race is not given to the swift, now the battle to the strong to them that hold out until the end. The poet picked it up, put his pen up and said, the race is not over until it's over. Never, it ain't over until it's over. But the songwriter knew that he was in a race and he's, he penned it, I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. If anybody asks you, what the matter with me? Tell them that I'm what? Saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, I'm by your baptized. I've got Jesus on my side. I'm running for my life. Oh, I'll tell somebody, stay in the race. Tell somebody, stay in the race. Stay in the race. As we look at our text. Now, that was just my introduction. <laughs> so don't, don't, don't think we're over yet. We, we just getting started. <clears throat> I think I'm going to use my hand, mic. Amen. Testing. Good. As we look at the text for this evening, we find one of God's greatest apostles sharing with us a course on how Christians should run the race. How we should run the race. And Paul, Paul has a story to tell us this afternoon. Paul, the one that had that great encounter with Jesus on the Damascus Road. He was knocked down, blinded, touched, changed, and given his sight again, but never to see the same way again. Paul starts a race that would lead him in so many different directions, and yes, even to his death. Paul gives us the rules and the regulations of the game. Paul was a keen observer 
of the Grecian games, especially the Ithmus game, which is still held. And he observed the runners and he, he observed the boxers and he observed how they had to be in subjection to the rules and regulation of the game. So he gives us uh, an example of how the Christian life and the life of the runners uh, were, are in comparison. So we want to explore these findings that Paul to see if we can bring them into our everyday walks of life. Paul tells us that all runners, can we get agreement on that? All of us are in a race. And, 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 uh, but one receiveth the prize a win the race. As Christians, we realize that we are running for uh, the mark, the mark of the high calling. Not only do I run, but I press toward the mark of the high calling. How many know this race is a race that you got to run with vigor? Mm -hmm. You got to pick up the pace every now and then. Yes. In other words, you got to get some energy yes. behind your run. Yes. Uh, as Christians, we run for the prize. And we look to the author and finisher of our faith. There are going to be times in the race. We will have to exert a certain amount of energy to pick up the pace, to keep going, no matter what. There are going to be times in the race we feel that the runners are passing you by. <laughs> but keep on running and stay in the race. Amen. Paul realized that the rules of running must be followed. Paul see the runners running. And sometimes he wonder how they're going to make it. He see them all over the track. <laughs> they see all out of their lane. All out of control. And out of the boundaries of the rules. As Christians... We cannot live a corrupt, dishonest, immoral, sinister, and unrepentant life Amen. and expect to win the race. Can I get a witness? Uh, one of God's greatest track stars and is running the race. Uh, there was a coach that had a successful track team. And one of the sporting events, one weekend, they took his team to the sporting event. And, and the runners uh, were doing all kind of illicit things. So one of the track stars came up to him and said, Coach, if we do that, we'll get kicked off the team. He said, that's right. He said, he saw them. The young man saw the, the, the runners smoking, partying, and even drinking. So he said, Coach, why can't we smoke, drink, and party? He said, well, you can. You can drink, you can smoke, stay out late, but you can't win. Christians often see what the world is doing, how the world is acting, and what the world is doing. And we ask ourselves, why can't we do what they do? And, 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 and why can't we do what they are doing? And, 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 and I tell you this afternoon, you cannot win the race doing what the world does. Can I get a witness? Paul tells us in order to win the prize. Not an earthly prize, but a heavenly prize. I have to put myself into subjection. In other words, I have to look at myself. I, I, 
I got to study myself, and I have to follow the rules of the game. I have to stay in my lane. I have to run straight toward the finishing line. I can't let my mind drift from side to side. I got to stay in the race. When trouble comes in our lives, stay in the race. Some may get weak doing the race, but stay in the race. Some may stumble or even fall. Get up and get back in the race. When you feel like giving up, run on anyhow. When you are tempted to quit, stay in the race. And I don't know about you, every now and then I have to go back to those classrooms and pick up my ABCs of life. In other words, if I look at my A, when I'm abused, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm burdened down, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm confused, I'm going to stay in the race. Help me out, Ben. When I'm dejected, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm energized and emotionally disturbed, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm frustrated, I'm going to stay in the race. When gloom comes, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm helpless and hopeless, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm in the possibilities come, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm jeopardized, I'm going to stay in the way. When I'm king, when I'm knocked down, I'm going to get up and get back in the race. When I'm lonely, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm mixed up, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm narrowed in, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm oppressed, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm pushed around, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm squeezed in, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm trapped between, I'm going to stay in the race. When it's an uphill journey, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm vexed from every side, I'm going to stay in the race. When the track is winding around, I'm going to stay in the race. When the yieldless interference come, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm yielded from every side, stay in the race. When zeal or business come in my life, I'm going to stay in the race. When I'm zigging, and dragging my way through. Stay in the race. Keep on running. The race that is set before us. Press on. Run on. Sing on. Pray on. At the finishing line, you will see God's face. When we get there, we're all going to get our crown. A crown of life. We're going to get our crown when we get to heaven. The songwriter had it right. I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Tell them that I'm saved, sanctified. I'm Holy Ghost filled. And I'm fire baptized. I've got Jesus on my side. I'm running for my life. How many witnesses I've got out here today that you're going to run on see what the end going to be? How many believe if you just hold out and hold on that you're running for my life? I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life.
What's the matter with me? What's the matter with me? Oh, tell them that I say. Holy Ghost, fire, I got Jesus on my side, yeah, yeah, I'm praying for my life, I'm praying for my life, I'm praying for my life. Invitation of him, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that save a wretch like me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're here today and, and you don't know this Jesus. And you got to know him. And you have an opportunity to come to know him as your personal Lord and Savior. Lay yourselves at, your, at his feet. All you are and all that you have. And we're going to have a, an invitation, an opportunity for you to come and give your life to Jesus. Maybe you're sure, <clears throat> maybe you're here and you're, and you hope that you're saved. And you hope that, that, that if you were to die tonight that that you'd go to heaven, but you don't know so. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 13, uh, these things are written that you might know that you have eternal life. So we need to take care of that tonight. Before one more day passes, before one more beautiful sunset passes. If you're not sure, make sure. Or maybe you are a believer in 
And you've been getting out of your lane. You've been watching the world and beginning out of your lane and, and God's calling you home. And you come and rededicate your life to him. Sometimes we have to go back to the ABCs. Brother Tom was teaching us. So you come. However the Lord is speaking, might as well be honest with him. He knows everything about everything. So the altar is open tonight. It's God's altar. It's God's life. It's God's church. So let's just be open. Let's be the Lord's. Let him have his way with our life. Jared, come and lead us in an invitation hymn. Jared's going to start us off.